Joining us in the kitchen today is Smush Parker. Former L.A. Laker, former player for the Heat, former player for a lot of people. Smush is competing in the basketball tournament, a 32-team winner-take-all tournament for $500,000 this weekend in Philadelphia. You can follow the action at thetournament.com, and let's talk to Smush. Smush, you've played all over this globe. What's the worst place? I think you've played in 10 countries. What is the worst single experience you've had in a country playing basketball? Man, I would actually say in Greece. You know, those, those fans out there in Greece are very passionate about their sports. They uh, back their teams up tremendously, and you don't want to play on a road in Greece. I mean, they're, they're lighting fl flags on fire, pulling chairs out of the stadium, throwing it on the court. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great environment to play in, but also scary at the same time. What's the most scared you've been in one of those environments? Uh, the most scared I've been, I, back in uh, 2003, I was playing in Greece for the uh, Greek Cup. Championship game now. And I'm dribbling up the court, and I see a flare shoot across my head <laughs> to the opposing fans on the other side. You know, they had to stop the game for at least two hours to kick everybody out of the game, and we finished the uh, game with an empty uh, stadium. <laughs> wow. Wait a minute. So, wait a minute. So, if, at what point in the game was this? What was happening here? A flare? How close did it get to your head? Uh, it was pretty close. It was, it was close enough for me to duck and have to, you know, pick up my dribble. <laughs> and did you stay out there? Did you look at somebody? Did you go looking for a fight? Did you run off the court? What'd you do? No, I mean, I'm from New York, man. A little flare doesn't, you know, frighten <laughs> me. I just... look, they're not shooting flares <laughs> off in the games you in New York, Smush. You can be from New York without having been in a game where there are flares near your head. Listen, I'm not afraid of a little flare. You know, it was interesting to me. I actually stay. I wanted to, I, I, it was a great experience for me. Now, I was also a part of that uh, D Detroit Pistons, Indiana, uh, Indiana Pacers fiasco. Well, I was I just test ran into the stands. I was going to just ask you about that. We've had some people come on the show and tell some great stories about that night. What specifically do you remember about that night? Well, I, <laughs> I mean, if you remember, I played on a great uh, Detroit Pistons team uh, when they won the championship with uh, Chauncey Billups or, you know, Ben Wallace. And uh, I was actually in the game in the fourth quarter, and I was actually excited to be on the court. And then that fight broke out, and I was like, Come on, guys! I just got on the court. I want to play, <laughs> and I, and I just saw, just see the fans going crazy. You know, the, the players going crazy. I'm just standing at half court with the basketball, just wanting to play some basketball. Who were you rooting for, the customers or the Pacers in that fight? As you watched Ron Artest and Jermaine O'Neal, uh, who were you rooting for? Well, I, you know, being a New York guy, I was hoping that uh, Ron Artest didn't get uh, get beat up by anybody or. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I know him personally. I, I was hoping that he didn't beat anybody up. <laughs> you know, Ron Artest is a, a big, strong guy. What would you say your thoughts are now on Kobe Bryant? You guys didn't seem to have much of a relationship when you were playing together. Do I have that right? Um, yeah, we didn't have much of a relationship or a friendship, but who did at that time uh, with uh, Mr. KB? He's just a, um, a hard person to talk to, but he, he loves to compete. And he's a good player. Smosh, come on, let's go, give it up. You know, like, come on, what, I, I appreciate it, but you're known for your candor and honesty. Give me the story. What's up with you and Kobe? I mean, there was nothing, when I was there, we didn't have a friendship. It was just uh, strictly business, strictly uh, professional, all basketball talk. Uh, it wasn't until I did an interview, something like this, after my two-year tenure in L.A., where they asked me if, uh, how was it playing with Kobe Bryant? And I just said, honestly, it was just an overrated experience. I never said anything about him personally. I never said anything to knock his game. I just said the whole experience playing with uh, Kobe Bryant was overrated. Well, he also mentions you when he talks about the lack of talent on those teams. It seems like your name is the one that he brings up. Does he bother you that people bring up your name so quickly when they talk about those teams? No, not at all. Not anymore. It did, but, uh, you know, I'm... It, it goes into the territory. Everybody, you know, always has something to say when you're, you're doing something positive. So I just try to use it as fuel for my fire and, you know, move on. Last Kobe question. Is it true that he would not allow you to talk to him? Like he just didn't want to talk to you, period. <laughs> you really want, you really want some, uh, a story out of this, huh? Last question. I promise you. We'll move on to other stuff next. I'm just curious if that's true. You can just say yes or no and we'll move on. Okay, uh, he told me one day in practice I tried to talk to him outside of, you know, basketball, about football. And he looked at me in practice and was dead serious and said, you can't talk to me. You need more accolades under your belt before you come talk to me. That ain't right.
Ain't right. That ain't cool. What, but what's I, the answer you give you know, to well, that? I promised him no more questions. I promised him no more questions. What's the happiest you ever were playing basketball? Happiest? The happiest? I mean, playing in L.A. was a great experience. I love playing for Phil Jackson. He's a great coach. L.A. is a great city to play for. I felt I felt like a, a, a star amongst stars playing in L.A. You know, you people grow up, you know, people watch these actresses and actors on, on a big blue screen every day. They, they go to the movies and they see them act. You know, I was actually entertaining those actors. I was, you know, I was entertaining those stars. You know, it, it didn't get any bigger than that. How does that elevate a man's dating game, being the starting point guard for the Lakers? <laughs> I wouldn't know. I mean, I, I actually stayed low key when I was in LA. Sounds like you was doing it wrong, man. <laughs> it sounds like I was just. I mean, about your, man, to... your man Sasha pulled Maria Sharon Paul, but you out here kicking it low key. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a low key kind of guy. Smush, thank you for being on with us. We appreciate the time, sir. Thanks for having me. Gracias, Smush.